Britain is in mourning and so is the political class. Every flag in Westminster near Parliament at half-mast. Parliament had been dissolved anyway before national elections, but the Manchester attack brought an end to all campaigning. All the parties agreed on stopping. The Prime Minister spoke with rage in her eyes and in her voice at what seems to have been a deliberate attempt to kill children. We struggle to comprehend the warped and twisted mind that sees a room packed with young children not as a scene to cherish, but as an opportunity for carnage. Every other political party, every politician, said the same. Absolutely shocking news. It's the most appalling act of violence that's taken the lives of young people who were at a music event to enjoy themselves. This was a terrorist attack deliberately targeted at children having the time of their lives. It was cowardly, it was deliberate, it is beyond wicked. After this, any sort of political campaigning would have been seen to be in such poor taste as to make it inconceivable. But at some point in the coming days, when the vigils and the church services are finished, they will have to start all over again. They'll have to gauge pretty carefully when is the right time. The most difficult question then may be how much of this to make part of the campaigning. Security hasn't really figured as an issue much so far, but ignore it and they run the risk of being described in the papers as soft on terrorism. Make it an issue too much, though, and risk being accused of using the deaths of children for political gain. And Lawrence joins us live now outside the UK Houses of Parliament in central London. So, as we were saying, Lawrence, campaigning has been suspended. Any idea when it might start again? Uh, no, not yet, though, it seems to me. Uh, both the opposition leaders, the main opposition leaders, Jeremy Corbyn and Tim Farron, have been in Manchester. They were on stage there along with the uh, Conservative Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, who, who was there after Theresa May, the Prime Minister. She's back down here now for another security meeting tonight. Uh, I don't think the time's right yet. It doesn't feel to me like it's going to be right tomorrow either, though we are told the Labour Party is doing just a little local campaigning, uh, but not much more than that. And I think they just need to see what the mood on the streets feels like a good bit more, certainly, through tomorrow, uh, and then perhaps see if, 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 they, if they feel that the time is right to begin a, a, a little more towards the end of the week. Then, uh, by coincidence, uh, Theresa May, the Prime Minister, it is assumed, will still go to Sicily for the G7 meeting, where, among other things, she's supposed to be uh, chairing a, an entire meeting about security, because one of the things the Italian government wants to talk about at the G7 this year is migration uh, and, and making people feel safe when people are coming over in boats from other countries and, and, and the uh, alleged risks that are uh, contingent in that. Given that Theresa May's entire experience in government is to do with home affairs and security, she's going to want to use that opportunity, I imagine, uh, to look like she's an expert in all of these things. And given that, the, you know, the main man at the G7 this year is bound to be Donald Trump, it's his first G7, uh, and he described the Manchester attacker uh, in very blunt terms uh, in, in the Middle East uh, this morning as an evil loser, uh, then I think is probably going to be an opportunity for her to try to generate some headlines and suggest that she has a pretty strong idea about how the country can tackle this sort of thing in the future. Well, Lawrence Lee there in Westminster, thank you.